Welcome to week two, My Best Today, and I'm Brooke Kruckman. There used to be a show on television called Undercover Boss. The premise was that the CEO of a company would be inserted undercover as a new hire into a frontline task, you know, like a regular guy. The hope being that the CEO and the viewers would come to understand the importance and dignity of workaday people, the folks who get stuff done. Frontline work is never glamorous. In one case, it was the guy who washed out recently emptied dumpsters returned to the yard. In another, it was a harried yet pleasantly efficient bar waiter at a fancy resort. Nevertheless, in every episode, the employee was great. The boss overwhelmed and enlightened. Slaves, obey your earthly masters with fear and trembling in the sincerity of your soul as to Christ, not with eye service, as if pleasing men. And masters, do the same things to them, giving up threatening, knowing that both their Lord and yours is in heaven, and there is no partiality with him. In the ancient world, slavery was not based on race, rather, most often on foreign status. Slaves could be highly educated and hold relatively high social positions. Think of Joseph becoming Pharaoh's right-hand man, or even the parable of the talents from week one. The slaves were given responsibility for oversight and management of the master's estate and business. Slave was a pervasive social role prompting St. Paul all the way back in 60 AD to address the subject of work ethic and management. Sadly, 2,000 years later, we have advanced little on the matter. In the 2006 film, The Devil Wears Prada, Andrea, our plucky and determined heroine, finds herself at a crossroads. Despite her best efforts, this top-of-her-class journalism graduate has not found employment in her chosen profession. So she reluctantly takes a job as the second assistant to Miranda Priestley, the unyielding high-power editor-in-chief of Runway, a fashion magazine. Andy figures she'll give it a year. It'll be a good resume builder. And it shows. After a series of mishaps, Miranda dresses her down. It is not pretty. Distraught Andrea seeks out her one ally. She hates me, Nigel. And that's my problem because... Oh, wait, no, it's not my problem. I don't know what else I can do because if I do something right, it's unacknowledged. She doesn't even say thank you. But if I do something wrong, she is vicious. So quit. What? Quit. I can get another girl to take your job in five minutes. One who really wants it. No, I don't want to quit. That's not fair. But you know, I'm just saying that I would just like a little credit for the fact that I'm killing myself trying. Andy, be serious. You are not trying. You are whining. What is it that you want me to say to you, huh? Do you want me to say, poor you, Miranda's picking on you. Poor you, poor Andy, hmm? Wake up, Six. She's just doing her job. This is not just a magazine. You have no idea how many legends have walked these halls. And what's worse, you don't care. Because this place where so many people would die to work, you only deign to work. And you want to know why she doesn't kiss you on the forehead and give you a gold star on your homework at the end of the day? Raise your hand if you want to work for a hard-nosed boss, a mean boss, a demanding boss. That would be useless. Nigel is right. You should quit. Why get picked on? On the other hand, no one wants to work with someone who's phoning it in, who doesn't really want to be a part of the team. Do the rest of us a favor and quit so that someone else can have a shot at the job, someone who will at least make an effort. Of course, there is always the third option. You could try, for real, not just pretend to try and then keep score of all the perceived injustices that justify your lackluster performance, because attitude is everything. Thus, Hezekiah did much work throughout all Judah, and he did what was good and right and faithful before the Lord his God. Every work which he began in the service of the house of God in law and in commandment, seeking his God, he did with all his heart and prospered. His work was hard, sometimes thankless. One such work was a water tunnel. They named it after Hezekiah. It is still there in Jerusalem to this day. But that's not why we obey our earthly masters, so that we may be remembered, you know, I service. No, St. Paul says it is because we are to consider every work as to the Lord and not to man. And just to be clear, God is not demanding. Every work does not mean more work. 
This is a heart and mind situation. And St. Paul means only what he says. The work that you are doing now, you know, driving the kids to school, helping out at church, cashiering at the local fast food, going to the office, making dinner for the family, and even laundry and mopping the floor, all this you do for the Lord. You might as well, he's there with you whether you acknowledge it or not. Oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all together. And for the management team, Paul prompts a do unto others reminder and offers a field leveling truth. Both the slaves, Lord, and the master's Lord is in heaven and there is no partiality with him. Kind of humbling, wouldn't you say? Popular business analyst Jim Collins suggests a reliable way to become just such a godly type of boss. When things are going well, great bosses look out the window at the team who makes it happen. When things are going poorly, they look in the mirror and take responsibility. The not-so-good bosses, well, they do the opposite. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, count others more significant than yourselves, a.k.a. don't forget you wouldn't have any beans to count if there weren't a bunch of employees out there growing your beans. God knows this isn't going to be easy at work or at home. Coworkers can be difficult, employees lazy, your children are demanding, and your spouse may periodically be oblivious, but it's not about them. Whatever you do, work at it wholeheartedly as though you were doing it for the Lord and not merely for people. It's about you and your attitude, because attitude is the little thing that makes a big difference. Like our heroine, Andy, we need to wake up because a positive attitude will cause a chain reaction with grand rewards. This all takes a bit of practice and a lot of help. Here is what Brother Lawrence had to say about the matter. And when the occasion arose to practice some virtue, he always said to God, my God, I cannot do this unless you enable me to do so. And he was immediately given the strength needed and even more. This from a man with a bad leg who was on permanent KP duty. Choose to give your best right now in whatever opportunities God has placed before you and ask Him for help. He loves it when you do.